Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. He reigns forever. He reigns forever and forever. As we stand over our feet all this morning all over the congregation, as we're celebrating 131 years. Amen. Celebrate 131 years of, of loving God's people and giving back to the community. We ask you to join in with our doxology this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. giving us the opportunity just to praise your holy and righteous name. Dear Lord, as our pastor brings the word, we ask that you restore and replenish what he has poured out to his people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. And we all say... Amen. Amen. We want to thank Elder Kane for providing us with our morning invocation. We will now have our scripture by Sister Ruby Morgan. Ruth. <laughs> Good morning, West Durham. We're blessed of 131 years. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Our scripture today will be coming from Isaiah 43, verses 19 verses 14 through 19, and it's like this. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send the Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel, creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the carrots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, neither to rise again, extinguished and stuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. 
now is spring up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Amen to God's word, and you all have a blessed one. Please remain standing as we now lift this hymn of our morning. Time is filled with swift transitions. None on earth unmoved can stand. So build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hands. There's some seats right up here in the middle as our worshipers come in. Amen, somebody. We invite you to come and let's lift this song together. I need y'all to sing it like you know it this morning. Come on, time is filled with flip transition. Now. Yo! Yeah. 
Amen. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Through everything we're going through in life, we call on our friends and our family, but I know a man that you can call on who will never change. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We will now have our welcome by Sister Makiba McDaniels, followed by a remark from the homecoming committee. After that, then we will have our, our historical re, uh, reflections from Deaconess Mildred Perry in that order. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our members worshiping with us today in person and online. And I just must say, the audience looks beautiful in their hues of burgundy, gold, and mustard. You look beautiful and handsome. I am Sister Makiba Tate McDaniel, and on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Lamont Johnson, Sr., our officers, members, of West Durham Baptist Church, we welcome all visitors to our 131st homecoming service today. Whether you are worshiping with us in person or online, we are gl glad you chose West Durham Baptist Church. We hope that you will be so inspired that you will want to join us again. If you are new in the area or looking for a church home, please consider making West Durham Baptist Church your choice. Next Sunday, members and visitors, we are asked to wear pink in honor of breast cancer awareness. So again, you look great today. You're gonna to look more fantastic next Sunday in your hues of pink. Um, at this time, we're gonna ask the homecoming committee to come up and to, uh, for everyone to uh, review the announcements that are on the screen before and after service. Thank you and have a blessed week. And again, happy homecoming. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Happy homecoming. The committee would like to thank the following. Pastor Johnson, our associate ministers, all participating ministry leaders, our church body, and friends of Western Baptist. Because of you, we have been able to make our homecoming a success. Give yourselves a round of applause. Special recognition also the homecoming committee would like to recognize the participants in and the supporters of our homecoming t-shirt sales as well as our rainbow tea fundraiser, our spiritual Wednesday workshop presenters, our church custodians, our church secretary, our trustees, and our communications, hospitality, and finance ministries. Without your background support of this year's homecoming, None of this will be possible, so let us give them a hand as well. At this time, we, the committee, have the distinct honor of recognizing um, one of our very own, and she has no idea, y'all, it is so hard to keep things away from her, but we would like to recognize Miss Naomi Nunn Atwater. <laughs> She has no idea, but you know what? We, be we believe in giving people their flowers while they are still living, while they're still here to smell them. And Miss Atwater, believe it or not, she has chaired, I think she said, I was trying to pull information from her, but I think she's chaired about five homecoming committees, but she's been a part of several countless homecoming committees over the years, and she has served as a great mentor to us. So... Even though she says I'm the chairperson, this is really who the chairperson. She kept us on our toes. But anyway, Miss Atwater, this is, this is very well deserved. You kept us on our toes. I will be at work and I will get calls and text messages from Miss Atwater just making sure that we stayed on top of things. So Miss Atwater, thank you so much for what you continue to do. Even though she says she's not going to do things anymore, <laughs> she continues to do it. So um, we just wanted to recognize you today. 
and we couldn't tell you. All right. So um, this is the part that we've all been waiting for. And so um, on behalf of myself as the homecoming chairperson, as well as the homecoming committee, also with clearance from our trustee chair and also our church treasurer, I have cleared this two and three times. And so we are pleased to inform you that we have not only met, but we have surpassed our homecoming goal this year. And so, in countless talks with our chair of our trustee ministry, um, she has informed me that she is in the process of scheduling the restoration of our steeple. Amen? Amen. All right. So, may, on behalf of the committee, may God continue to bless each of you, and thanks again for your support of the Western Baptist Church's 131st anniversary. We look forward to seeing you um, at dinner today. Um, and I do want to say in advance, our very own Tiffany Carrington, with the help, and they don't like public um, acknowledgement either, but <laughs> Tiffany Carrington, with the help of her husband and daughter, our fellowship hall looks amazing. So I want to give them kudos for that. So again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts from our 2023 Homecoming Committee. And now, Deaconess Mildred Perry will come forth for historical reflections. Have a blessed day. Amen. Good morning. As you all are aware, today we observe our 131st homecoming. Western Baptist Church has a rich history which is woven into the tapestry, not only of the Bull City, but also of the state of North Carolina. I'm sure most of you have heard the history of Western Baptist Church many times over and have learned about it in new members training. But if we are not reminded of where we come from, we can't appreciate the many blessings that have gotten us where we are. The church was founded in the autumn of 1892 by Reverend W. H. Stanfield of Durham County, who was following the vision that God had placed in his heart. This first structure was a one-room box house on Ferrell Street. Eventually, three annexes were added to the structure. While the church was located on Ferrell Street, there were eight pastors. The Reverend W. H. Stanfield, who served twice, Reverend Thompson, Reverend Simmons, Reverend Peace, Reverend Scott, Reverend H. Johnson, Reverend T.A. Grady, and Reverend Thomas Carr Graham. During Reverend H. Johnson's leadership, the church purchased a lot on Thaxton Avenue. The lot was paid off, and a new church was erected on Thaxton Avenue in 1924 under the leadership of Reverend Thomas Carr Graham. In 1939, an education building was added. West Durham was the first African-American congregation in Durham to add an education building. While the church was located on Thaxton Avenue, there were two pastors, the Reverend Thomas Carr Graham and the Reverend Frederick D. Terry. In the early 1960s, the church was di displaced by the Durham Freeway and urban renewal. The church held a groundbreaking ceremony at the present location on the corner of Nixon and Athens Avenue on Sunday, April 13, 1969. The present church structure was completed under Reverend Terry's leadership. The membership moved to a new church on April, in, I'm sorry, into the new church on April 19, 1970. There have been five pastors at this location. The Reverend Frederick Terry, Reverend Dr. Harold J. Cobb, Reverend Jerome Anderson, Reverend Dr. Terry Thomas, and our current pastor, Reverend Dr. Lamont J. Johnson, Sr. Yeah. Yeah. West Durham Baptist Church has been blessed over the last years with a continual increase in membership. We also have seen an increase in the associate ministers and those advancing into ministers training as well. Under the phenomenal vision and leadership of Pastor Johnson, we are truly living up to this, year visions, this year's vision of expanding our reach, reaching up, out, in, and over. Happy 131st anniversary, West Durham. In the words of Kurt Carr, for every mountain you brought me over, for every trial you've seen me through, for every blessing, hallelujah, for this I give you praise.
Amen. Amen. We will now have to, let me first put this out there. If you have never seen these young ladies before, then you are definitely in for a treat. So this is your first time. I, I suggest you make sure you so you can see because they are a phenomenal group of young women that's going to come forward and, and, and bless us with what they do. So we will now have our dance team, our dance ministry, to come forth and share what you have for the people of God. Let's give them a round of applause as they come forward this morning. Amen. Your 
Amen. Let's give them another round of applause. He is a powerful God. Amen. Amen. Now we come to a part of our program that everyone can participate in. Your name and I have been listed on the program, but however, God asks of you 10% of all thine increase. So this is an opportunity for us to give back to the Lord for what he has given to us. Uh, there, there's a song that comes to mind when, when I think about it, uh, about tithes and offering, and it says, you can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. The song goes on to say, just as sure as you are living, and the Lord in heaven on how the more you give, the more he'll give unto you. Just keep on giving because it's really true. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. So we will stand up all over the congregation as we bring forth God our tithes and offerings. And if you would raise your gifts and repeat after me. Not a debt I owe, but a seed I sow. I'm sowing where I'm growing. I'm sowing into good ground. And I expect, and I expect, and I expect a supernatural harvest. God bless the seed and God bless the sower. Amen. And we will now have our, our altar prayer by Minister Yolanda, Yolanda Mangum. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God be praised. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we come, Lord, standing on our feet with our heads bowed, dear God. Lord God, we come right now reverencing you for 131 years, dear God. We reverence you, Lord, for the breath of life this morning, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here this morning, Lord God. We lift up prayer for those that are here and those that are online, dear God. Those that may be dealing with sickness, Lord, disease, Lord God, diabetes, Lord, high blood pressure, Lord, low blood pressure, dear God. God, heart disease, Lord God, and any other type of illness, Lord, cancer, Lord God, M muscular dystrophy, Lord God, muscular sclerosis, dear God. We lift up each and every disease, Lord, that could ever be thought of, Lord God, right now, Lord, because we know you are healer this morning, Lord God. Lord, we know that you're a mind regulator. We're praying for those, Lord God, that may have any type of mental illness, Lord God. Lord, we know that you can regulate their minds, dear God. Lord, we're praying for Alzheimer's this morning, Lord. Arthritis, Lord God. Lord God, we just lift you up because we know you can do just what you said you could do, dear God. Lord God, we pray and usher in your spirit, Lord God. Send your spirit, Lord, like the rain, Lord. Like the dew in the morning, Lord. Let it rest upon our hearts, dear God. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that you just come in, Lord, and breathe on us, each and every one of us, Lord. Breathe on us, Lord. Breathe on us, Lord. We lift you up, Lord God, and we praise you. Your holy name. 
In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. And just a reminder, those that were unable to go to Gilify to provide your tithes and offerings, that on your way out the doors, there'll be two offering boxes you can put your offering, your tithes and offering in on your way out. Amen? Amen. We will now have a, our pre semantic selection by our choir. Follow that will be the Word of God. Amen? Let me say it again. Behind, after the choir does their priest, their uh, semantic selection, would be the word for none other, our pastor of the West Durham Baptist Church, the Reverend Dr. Lamont Johnson. Everyone clap your hands and praise God.
give him total praise. Come on, let everything that has breath. Come on, let everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I lift my hands in total praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah, God. Well, somebody ought to tell them thank you. Hallelujah, God. Total praise says, I know what the Lord has done. I know what I've been through. And he deserves not just a little bit, not just a sort of praise, but he deserves total praise. I wish I had somebody here to open your mouth, throw your head back, and just tell the Lord, thank you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Even as I look in the balcony with a Mickey Mouse headband on, I see Zuri Grace in the room. Somebody ought to tell God thank you. Still going through treatment, but she's still here. I need somebody to tell the Lord thank you. Look back over and see Brother Nunn in the back. Brother Nunn, wave your hand. I see you. On dialysis, but you're still here. Right behind him, Sister Linda, going through cancer. Got your mask on, but you're still here. Somebody ought to just lift one hand up and say, I'm still here. Ah, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. You can be seated if you can in the presence of the Lord. I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still here. We, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I need somebody to help Sharita bless him up there in the balcony. I need, y'all, the food is going to be there when we get downstairs, but I need somebody who's got a praise in this place and not ashamed, not, not embarrassed, not nervous to just take about 30 seconds and just give God the best praise you got on you to just tell him, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, 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 Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, come on, clap your hands if you can in this place. We greet you with joy. While you're clapping, celebrate God for our music ministry that has set our atmosphere for our dance ministry. Girls, y'all did an amazing job as always. Our AV technicians, amen, our AV ministry, which has allowed this to be a seamless program on today. I'm getting remarks out the way because I'll preach, do invitation, do grace, give instructions, and we'll go downstairs and eat. Again, it is befitting for us to celebrate God for our homecoming committee. Our homecoming committee has done a spectacular Y'all just look around. Come on, we ought to tell God thank you. Our homecoming committee has done a spectacular, spectacular, spectacular job. Amen. To those who show us hospitality every Sunday that we come. And to all of you, God's children. I want to do this without getting in trouble because I've got um, a few persons that I was uh, uh, informed are here, and there are so many of y'all that are here that I know hasn't been here, but we're glad to have Claudia Williams, Deacon Thomas's daughter, who passed just before, amen, I arrived, amen, God bless you, come on, stand up, amen, y'all come on, give her a hand, so glad to see you here, amen, so glad to have you here back home today, amen, uh, just behind her, amen, is, uh, I know she's going to get, get on me, amen, but Sister Valerie Thomas, amen, our former first lady, amen, who has... Amen. Y'all give a big, big round of applause who has been quietly a consistent, 
consistent, and they, and they baby girl, amen, has been a consistent supporter of West Durham, and I'm grateful for that. Amen. I'm glad to see my sister who just moved here. Now, she is going to probably beat me up. My sister who just moved here from Georgia. Amen. Janitha, you'll just wave your hand. I'm just glad. Amen. She's here. And amen. Just relocated. Amen. Here. Now, listen, this is what I'm going to do so I don't get in trouble. So I don't get in trouble. If you have moved away and have traveled back home today to West Durham, will you please stand? If you have moved away and have traveled back home, will you please stand? Please stand. Please stand. If you've gone away, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody that's traveled any distance. Amen, somebody. Well, if you grew up at West Durham, I want you to stand. If you grew up at West Durham, if you grew up. Amen. Some, well, amen, somebody. Amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. All of our visitors, will you please stand? All of our visitors. We want to God bless you. God bless you, love. God bless you, sir. God bless you all. Amen, somebody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. If you're a first-time visitor, lift your hand. If this is your first time here, I see you. Come on, West Durham. Let's thank God for all these first-time visitors. Amen. You may be seated. We've got something coming right to you. Amen. If you're a first-time visitor, just keep your hand up. We've got a little pen to put in your hand to let you know we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Amen. We're going to go downstairs after I preach, and I promise you I'm not going to hold you long. Amen. But I'm going to hold you as long as I need to hold you. I can't hear nobody pray. We, amen. amen. Is that all right? Amen, somebody. Y'all okay. not going to rush me today. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But there is, there is a word from, there's a word from the Lord. Isaiah 43, and just an inside joke, I thank God, amen, for Deaconess Bowden, amen, who um, has eagle's eyes. Uh, uh, I was in the middle of working on another project as I was finishing my notes, and I kept on sending Isaiah 53. And then, uh, and, 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 and there is an Isaiah 53, but there's not an Isaiah 53, 14. And she kept on telling me, Pastor, check your notes. And I'm like, it's right. And then it just tickled me, praise the Lord, amen, uh, uh, that we are in the proper, proper chapter. Isaiah 43, verse 19 is our key verse today. See, I am doing a new thing. Hmm. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and the streams in the wastelands. Shall we pray together? Kind of Father, we thank you for your grace. We do thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you for this amazing worship experience. We thank you, God, for family that has come, for friends who have come today. We are grateful for the amazing history and legacy of this branch of Zion, of this church, of West Durham. We pause to say thank you for our ancestors, God, who have paved the way for 131 years here, for every pastor whose shoulders I stand on. I personally say thank you. Now, God, for this time that we shall stand, give me clarity of thought and that of speech. Preach me, Holy Ghost, like never before. This I pray in Jesus' name. And all believing together say, amen. I want to live for a thought this morning a new day and a new dawn. A new day and a new dawn. Well, I don't have to tell you that these words, originally written by British songwriters Anthony Newley and Leslie Breton, was Nina Simone's anthem. Y'all act like y'all don't know it and ain't heard it before. Birds flying high. You know how I feel. See, I told you you know it. Sun in the sky. You know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by. You know how I feel. It's a new day. Dawn. 
it's a new day. It's a new life for me. Yeah, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me. Oh, huh. and I'm feeling good. Mm. I, 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 wish, I wish that that could be our sentiment, that last clause every day. And I'm feeling good. I wish every day we can all collectively wake up as Christians and say because of our uh, salvation, because of our discipleship, that every day we can wake up saying, I'm feeling good. I, I wish we could say really authentically because I go to church and, and pay my tithes because I'm faithful to the kingdom of God, that every day I can wake up saying, I'm feeling good. I wish every iteration of ministry would be met after meeting, meeting after meeting by saying, I'm feeling good. But the reality of the matter is that is not always our life's mantra. That is not always the saying that we attach our emotions, our psycho-emotive state to. Sometimes we're not feeling good. Oh, y'all can say amen right there. Some, sometimes we have our good days, yeah, and bad days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Weary days and sleepless nights. Sometimes the clouds hang low and we're not feeling good. But thanks be unto God, no matter how bad our days are, no matter how low life's moments are, God has put help in his word. No matter what life's circumstances uh, uh, or vicissitudes of life, as one person would say, whatever they may be, the good news is God has built into his word help for the weary. Help for those who do their best to not be weary in well-doing, knowing we shall reap if we faint not. But sometimes on our lowest days, we need to know that bad days don't last always. I like how Timothy Wright said, not our own Timothy Wright, but the real Timothy Wright, that says, listen, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. I mean, is there anybody in here that'll break into my sermon and would be real and say, I've had my share of troubles. I've had my share of, of, of sleepless nights. I've had my share of pain and sorrow, but I thank God that trouble don't last always. As a matter of fact, the psalmist would help us like this by saying, listen, weeping may endure for a night. Baby, you may have to cry for a little a while but joy can I preach like it's homecoming is coming in the morning yes 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 sometimes watch this because of our low times because of our pains because of a sickness because of cancer diagnoses because of all the things amen that minister Yolanda prayed against and prayed about because of sickness and disease and COVID and wars not on distance land but even here in America even as the Palestinians and the Jews are worrying we are fractured in our country cannot even get a speaker of the house with all of that going on I need y'all to hear me somebody's psyche somebody's emotional state can be dragged down low but listen and even with that watch this we will find ourselves murmuring and complaining over all of our bad days we'll find ourselves murmuring and complaining over all the things that have gone wrong in our our life but listen I like how Socrates once said it said stated Socrates said the secret to change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old but on building the new I wish somebody would praise God even for a philosophy in here today that says you don't have to worry about fighting the sicknesses and pains even if they're in your body right now we thank God for his word that says he was wounded for our transgressions. I wish I had a Bible reader in here bruised for 
our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Listen, we've got to understand that we can't focus on yesterday. We can't focus, and I know somebody said, but pastor, Dr. Johnson, new guy, that the whole purpose of us coming here is to celebrate 131 years of history. I get it. I know there's somebody that's saying our purpose is to celebrate all the stuff that we have done over the years. I get it. Our purpose is to celebrate all of the milestones that our church has accomplished over 131 years. It is our job to celebrate but not to move backwards. It's our job to tell God thank you for bringing us through dangers, toils, and snare, but it is our mission to declare to serve this present age. Our Y'all done lost me in here. Our calling to fulfill and that's what God is calling us to do. God is calling us to remember the farmer. Watch this. Even though he turns around and says, don't. I'm about to go there. Linger and dwell on the farmer things. But remember who I am. And when you know who God is, you can look back over your life and say the same God that brought my mama, my grandmama, my grandpappy through is the same God that I wish I had somebody in here that didn't feel too cute to live your hands and say he brought me through this and he brought me through that and I'm thankful here it is here it is here it is here it is it is God in this it is God in this passage speaking to the people of God through Isaiah that says, listen, I understand all that you've been through. If you read this whole section of Isaiah, this particular portion of Isaiah, Isaiah, the 60 books that there uh, uh, has us uh, a, a, a focus on God's mercy. This particular passage is speaking, uh, watch this, to God's mercy in the midst of his people's disobedience. Whew, I, I, I know y'all just wanted chicken today. I can't hit, um, he, he's speaking to them saying, listen, I've been trying to bless you, but you won't listen to what I'm trying to tell you. I've been trying to be, be uh, your uh, deliverer, but every time I try to bring deliverance, you slap my hand. I've, I've been trying to bring you out of bondage, but every time I try to bring you out of bondage, you decide you want to do your own thing. Every time I try to bring you help so you can have a new day and a new dawn, you go back to the same place you were at, get comfortable in your own sin, get comfortable in your own mess, and tell God no I'm good I can't hear nobody pray he says I'm trying to elevate you I'm trying to open doors for you I'm trying to make ways in the wilderness but y'all are still saying no I'm good and here is God saying even though you've messed up over and over and over and over time out y'all stop t telling that lie talking about he's a God of a second chance you lie and wonder he's a God of another chance had he been just a God of a second chance every one of us would have been dead a long time ago God I feel like preaching but I wish I had somebody to just nudge a neighbor and say he gave me another chance he gave me another chance to get it right he gave me another chance to pray on my child he gave me another chance he's a God yeah God of another chance and here it is. He said, I'm trying to help you. I want, I want you to be blessed. I want you to understand it's a new day and a new dawn. Don't you miss me, y'all. It is not West Durham that we throw out the past. No, no, no. It is not that we remove who we are. But in order for us to change a current generation, we have to know we're in a new generation. I, Jeff, got convicted this week. I'm doing a workshop at Shaw, and I'm feeling good about all my data, all my stats. I was feeling good about my PowerPoint. You know, I had the stuff all nice. It was, you know, doing all kind of origami and stuff as it was going from one slide to another. I was like, this good. <laughs> and, and then I'm, I'm, I'm as... 
I was born in 1979, so I'm, I'm the, the next to last year. I'm the pen, pen ultimate year of the Gen Xers. And so here I am talking, Sheena, about how these millennials are doing this and millennials are not doing that. And millennials, here's some data to help millennials. And then I asked all the millennials at there in the workshop to raise their hand and only two people raised their hand. Because the generation I was talking to were not millennials. They were Generation Z. Y'all look at me. Y'all looking at me funny in here. And watch this. We, we sometimes work so hard and so long to try to get one generation right when a whole nother generation has been born. Y'all ain't going to like this part. We work and work to get a computer. We fight and fight to finally get a computer. And then after 18 years of votes, 18 years of work, we finally got a computer. But now laptops. I can't hear nobody pray. And then we go and say, oh, Lord, we got to get a laptop. We got to get a laptop. We got to get a laptop. I make a motion that we get a laptop on readiness. And then we fight for 15 years about a laptop. And, la and then we finally get to the laptop age. And by George, everybody got tablets. We've got to stay in the generation to change the generation. I wish I had somebody in here to tell you I understand we have to celebrate the hymns of the the past but if you want your grandchildren to come to church you've got to get off of some stuff you're stuck on so your grandchildren can have the same church experience your grandmother had here it is this food gonna be good I know it is I know it is. going to be happy eaters and angry eaters, and here it is. The three, three things, because if God has done a new thing, new thing I want to show you how, how he does it. First of all, he says, listen, I want you to know, number one, that God will do what only God can do. I, I want you all to see this. It's in the text. He says, listen, I, you, you all forget the former things. Stop hanging on to the hurts of the past. He says, behold, look, huh, yeah, I'm doing a new thing. It, it does not say, Elder Cain, behold, I'm going to let you do your own thing. <laughs> and, and it's amazing to me how we'll come to church over and over and over again. And then uh, a minister Chris tried to steal from God his ability to be God. And so then we'll try, uh-oh, to do for God's people what only God's people can do. Uh-oh, come on, what God can do for his people. We then, amen, with our pious self, we'll begin to judge. God is the only righteous judge. I wish I had somebody here. We'll condemn. I, I can't hear no, I need y'all to understand about. There is therefore now no condemnation to those, read the whole Bible, who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after. After the flesh, but after the spirit. But it's God's job to condemn. Mm. There are communicable and non-communicable attributes of God. What's the big words, Dr. Johnson? Communicable. Many people are wearing masks even today. Because there is a communicable virus. Communicable virus. It can be communicated through the air. It can be exchanged. Mm. You can catch it in the air. Y'all know what COVID, come on, colds, flu, you can catch that in the air. Uh, mm. Non-communicable attributes are communicable, communicable attributes of God that he cannot share. It is like a, a, a non-communicable disease. Amen. You cannot catch cancer by being in the room. Y'all going to catch me in five minutes. It may be genetic, whatever it is, but you can't catch it through the air. There are some... <laughs> non-communicable attributes of God. God does not share. God is omnipresent. 
God is everywhere at the same time. Contrary to popular belief that he only shows up on Sunday morning and he really only shows up after we have something, the doxology. I can't hear nobody pray. I don't know what y'all be doing before that because he doesn't show up until we stand up to do the doxology or a hymn. And so God doesn't show up until we pray. But let me tell you something. God is everywhere all the time. God was with you. Come on, y'all ain't gonna like this part. Not just when the glory cloud is growing up, but when you have rolled something to make your own perfect glory cloud to grow. God is God is there. God is there when you're having your good days and your bad days. God is not just there when you're dancing in the church. God is there when you're shutting the club down. God is everywhere. Y'all better help me preach it here at the same time. He's omnipresent, but he's also omniscient. I'm not knowing all, knowing omniscient. He is a God that knows everything all the time. He knows our uprising and our downfall. He knows the hairs on our hair. God, and, and he knows the hair on the piece you just brought last night. God knows. I wish y'all would hear me preaching here. God knows. But can I tell you what I'm glad God knows? I'm glad God knows my name. I'm glad that when the enemy tries to tear me down, that God knows my name. That God knows when the enemy tries to tear you down, God knows your name. Somebody ought to say, and oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me and how he tells me I'm his own. He's omniscient. He is omnipresent, but he is omnipotent. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful. He has all power in the palm of his hand. And if the church is to make Make it and survive this present age as God is doing a new thing. We cannot lean on our own power. We cannot lean on the power of the preacher, on the power of the choir, on the power of our AV. We've got to lean on the power of God. And because God is the greatest power, he cannot be defeated. That's why he didn't build his church. God help me, help me preach it here on the preacher. He didn't build his church on the choir. He didn't build his church on a building, but he built his church on the truth. I tell you the truth, Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. And on this rock, I built my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You got to see God is doing a new thing. Here it is. You uh Oh, here it is. Here it is. He says, now. Secondly, it springs up. Uh-oh. Don't you perceive it? Can you see it? Uh, can you see it? That's the second thing I want to share today is that you have to see it before you see it. Hold that up there real quick. Because somebody thinks this is a play on words. He says, have you not perceived it? In other words, there has to be something, Elder Crystal, that happens on the inside before it happens externally. That, that, that's why God gives churches a visionary, a leader. Not that the pastor does the work by himself or herself, but that the pastor sees it, casts a vision, and the people run with the vision but you got to see it before you see it. Mm, 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 mm. Short, short, short point, short point, short point. If you're trying to get a job and you don't see yourself in the job, what are you applying to the job for? You've got to see yourself, Jeff, in the place that God has called you to be. Before you get to the place God has called you. He says, can't you perceive it? Don't you feel it on the inside that it's about to happen? Can't you see it before everybody else sees it? And can I tell you here is what messes up the enemy. The enemy gets mad, watch this, when you really catch a glimpse of glory divine. I know we sing it, but y'all, some of us don't mean it. When you turn around and say, God, I see it. 
that despite what I physically see with my eyes, despite what I've seen at the doctor, despite what I saw in the x-ray, despite what I saw in terms of statistics about young black men and young black boys, young black girls, you got to see it. I see what others can't see because I see through the eyes of faith. I wish I had somebody in here that feel like I feel now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. And when the enemy sees you as being down, you got to perceive it for yourself. That you are not below, you're above. You are not beneath, you are above. Even now with APR rates and interest rates so high that you can't buy a house and now it costs 14 billion dollars to buy a house in the hood of Durham I came to tell you you still gotta see it because God can change circumstances even when politicians can't see they're hurting the people they're representing God help me preaching here you've got to see it for yourself he says now it springs up I see it I see what God is doing even though a man others can't he says I've got to see it for myself and here this leads us into this last piece because watch this not only uh, will God do what only God can do but we have to see it before we see it because when we see it before we see it then what we see in this new day and new dawn will go counter to what everybody else sees it will go against yeah what your enemy said yes yes they said you weren't going to make it they said you wouldn't amount to anything but because you saw it for yourself you saw that you were the head yes and not the tail they said you weren't going to make it but you saw that you were above yes and not beneath well you know what your bank account looks like but you already see it that you are now the lender and no longer the borrower and as I prepare to go downstairs and to get me something to eat the last thing I wanted to tell you on this day of a new day and a new dawn that the way has already been made well good morning West Durham I don't know if y'all know that's good news that the way has already been made that God has already made a way that God has already opened the doors that God has already made the way straight y'all put that back on the screen because somebody needs to see that even if your back is against the wall the way has already been made even if you're trying to find out how you're going to make your ends meet the way has already been made how do I know the way has already already been made for the Bible says he's making ways in the wilderness in other words in your dark place in your desert land the Lord says I've already made a way is there anybody in here that'll tell God thank you that you have the power to make a way that you know how to make a way you have a history of making ways because you made a way for Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you have a history of making ways, you made a way for Job as you healed his body somebody say he's a way maker, y'all ain't helping me preach right here, somebody say he's a way maker he's a miracle worker he is a promise keeper he is light in the darkness and that's who God is he is a God that knows how to make a way is there anybody in here that'll slip your hand up and say Lord whatever you're doing in this season Lord don't do it without me can I go higher and because you made a way I can hear my grandmother say like a ship that's tossed and driven battered by 
and an angry sea when the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me I wonder what I have done to make this race so hard to run is there anybody in here that can see it before you see it you see the house you see the church you see the healing you see the way then you say to yourself so take courage because the Lord will I said the Lord will the Lord will make a way somehow how do I know he'll make a way because I've seen him do it before a hundred and thirty one years he's done it before and he'll do it again I dare you lay hands on yourself and say self he'll do it again he's a God that cannot lie he made a way for my mama he waited away for my grandmama he waited away for my grandfather and he's the same God yesterday today and forevermore he says I will do a new thing can I go higher is there anybody in here that feels like I feel God I'm ready God I'm ready God I'm ready for you to do a new thing in my life a new thing in my mind a new thing in my money a new thing in my family a new thing in my church a new thing on my job a new thing in my children I believe God has the power to do a new thing how do I know because he's done it before and he'll do it again I ain't gonna get in trouble but just look at somebody nod your head and declare he'll do it again whatever you ask whatever you need what you bind on earth I'll bind in the heavens what you loose on earth I'll loosen the heavens and I and I and I will do a new thing West Durham he's doing a new thing in the atmosphere a new thing for our ministry and because because he's done it before he'll do it again he's done it before he'll do it again he's done it before he'll do it again so I don't have to wait Till the battle is over, I can shout, I can shout, I can praise him because he's done it and he'll do it, he'll do it again, he'll do it again, yes, 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 yes. Standing, standing on your feet, all over this building, there are those who are going downstairs to prepare for you all, but if you're going to allow God, watch this, somebody said, how do I allow God, because God's not going to fight you, <laughs> but when you open your mouth, open your heart and say, God, I trust you, then God can do, <laughs> yes sir, a new thing. So if you have today not accepted him as Lord and Savior, won't you come today that the new thing he does in you is you. <laughs> that he can give you a new life. That he can give you a new walk. A new talk. Won't you trust him today? And accept him as Savior. Won't you come? That you might know him for yourself. 
If you're looking for a church home, maybe you came back home today and said, God, I feel you're doing a new thing. And I want to come back home today. This church doors are open for you. If you've been looking for a church home, today is your day. Won't you come? You can come on your Christian experience as a candidate for baptism. You can come to be reinstated or be a watch care member. Is there one? Is there one? Every head bow. Pray with me, even online. Lord Jesus. Come on, pray with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my right unrighteousness. I confess on the Lord Jesus. I believe he lived, he bled, he died. I believe he got that God. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And he arose a sitting into the heavens. And I believe. He sits at the right hand of the Father, and that one day he shall return for me. And upon the profession of my faith, I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, even with the Paul's inside, if you prayed that prayer today for yourself, won't you come? I will trust in the Lord. Is there one? Is there one? Well, come on, let's lift it one time. Oh, I will trust in now. I will trust in the Lord. Amen. Again, we thank God for everyone coming. Let me, as we remain standing, we're leaving. We're going downstairs to eat and fellowship together. And believe me, there's plenty of food. Amen. We done, we done made our budget, so if we got to go out and buy some more chicken. Come on, somebody. We can afford. We can afford to do it this week. Amen. So listen, the homecoming com- committee wishes to share these following dismissal plans as we transition to our anniversary dinner. Following the blessing and the benediction which I shall give, we're going to ask that everyone be seated where they're going to have the pulpit. And listen to this. Then our ushers will lead members and our visitors who are 70 and older for our seniors and those who need physical assistance. We ask that you please be dismissed first to give you ample time. Our ushers then will use COVID protocols, as we have been doing, to dismiss us in an orderly fashion. So we're going to have grapes, our benediction, a threefold amen. And then we ask you all then to be seated. Let's pray for the food. Father, we thank you for 131 years. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Now, God, bless the food. God, bless the vendor. Bless the company that provided the food. Bless the one, God, who paid for the food. We thank you, God, for your bountiful blessings. And God, we are mindful that not many feet from us, there's somebody that won't have a meal today. And so, God, allow us to help them know that there's bread in a starving land. Not just by our prayer, but by our action. Bless us and we are blessed. Keep us and we are kept. Protect us and we are kept protected. Receive now this benediction. You are blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed in your going and in your coming. So I speak the blessing of the Lord into your life and declare you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and no longer the borrower. And now may the grace of God, 
the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit and the love of Christ. May it rest, rule, and abide both now, henceforth, and forever, and ever, and evermore. And we all say, oh. Be governed orderly. Now, this was.